Hello and welcome to the instructional video on the 2017 Besser Car 454. Uh, so we'll run through the outside controls and then we'll move on to the inside. Uh, if you've got any questions I'll be happy to answer those on the day but I'll try and cover most of the essentials for you in this video. Uh, so with the cab controls, <clears throat> first things first, the bonnet release catch is just there so that's how you release the bonnet. Just while we're here, uh, I'll show you the blinds there, drawn across, so these are your darkening blinds, they're drawn across by pinching these two tabs together, and then draw this across, and just make sure that this bar here goes straight, and then it's a magnetic strip which keeps it in position, and it's exactly the same on the driver and passenger side. The windscreen one is exactly the same operation by pinching those two together, draw those across, and then there's a magnetic strip down here which corresponds onto the other side and that's what keeps them in position in the middle. There is a little um, cut out there uh, that makes way for the mirror which has the integrated uh, reversing camera. Uh, when you put these back just make sure that those tabs uh, are clicked back into position. Um, because as you're cornering, there's a danger that this could come across with inertia and uh, obviously uh, distort your vision, which uh, is a good thing as you're travelling. Uh, same thing again, when you're putting this back in, just make sure that, that bar, this bar here goes straight. It is easy to crease these. And then click back into position there. And then we'll move on to the bonnet. Bonnet release is just in the middle here. So under the bonnet then, we have uh, your washer fluid is filled uh, just there. Um, you've got coolant, uh, power steering fluid, um, oil fill. There is a dipstick on this one. Some of them don't have a dipstick, but it's got one there. Um, if you ever need to jump start this vehicle, it's done by putting your earth onto here. So your black cable onto this one. And then your positive goes onto a little tab which is down there. Sometimes you need a key to actually uh, release that. So if you put a key into that little slot there, it reveals a tab, which then you put the positive onto there. So your red cable onto there and uh, your negative onto here. So moving around the outside of the vehicle then, we've got fuel filler here. Oh, just one other noteworthy thing, your tyre pressures are here. Uh, but it's better to refer to the actual tyre themselves because they use specialist camper tyres on some models uh, which have got reinforced sidewalls uh, and are capable of containing more pressure than the standard van tyres. Uh, you've got your fuel filler here <clears throat> and so you'll need your key uh, for that. Uh, diesel fuel into here, uh, obviously you need your key to, uh, to operate that, that's where you fill up your fuel. Next one along is your gas locker. That's a lockable, um, that's a lockable locker. Uh, so two gas bottles into here. <clears throat> uh, these straps obviously retain the bottles. Two six kilogram propane bottles is what was required. Uh, it doesn't come with those, so uh, they are needed. Um, the inline regulator um, is here, so you don't need a regulator on top of your bottles as on some older models. Uh, you will need a pigtail, uh, which is the flexible hose that comes off the end of that. I'll grab one of those for you. Uh, and so what happens is that, that flexible hose comes off the end of here, uh, goes into the top of your gas bottles, which would be sitting here. And then there's a tap on top of your gas bottle that um, uh, basically puts the uh, fuel, uh, the gas fuel into the, into the vehicle. There is a um, further safety uh, mechanism here. You can, what it allows you to do is travel with the gas switched on. This is a, it's called a crash valve, which uh, is a bit worrying, but um, what it does is it, it senses if there's a, a sudden jolt or impact and switches off the gas supply to the motorhome. Uh, when you first connect it to gas, you'll need to depressurize that, uh, that valve by pushing that button in. Uh, so if you've not got a gas supply uh, coming into the vehicle, that's probably why. So you need to connect your gas bottles up um, switch it on on top of the tap which is on top of the bottle and then press that valve in you'll hear it hiss and then you know you've got a pure flow of gas coming into your motor. This model's fitted with an awning <coughs> and the, the awning wind is in the uh, storage locker underneath the bed basically that's the end that goes into the awning there 
uh, and then you just simply wind um, with this handle on the end here until you get the awning out uh, inside that box that comes out the front that that's that uh, front section there's legs that fold down from there but there is actually a separate video on that uh, which I'll uh, yeah, include it um, with the email that I send the link through to this one so there's a separate video on how to wind the awning out so moving along then um, <clears throat> this is the vent for the uh, so it's the chimney basically for the boiler so if you if you're running on gas if you're running the heating and the hot water on gas you will get um, steam rising from this and obviously it's the uh, uh, gas fumes coming from there as well it does need to be kept clear so just make sure that there's no debris um, and sometimes if it's close up to a hedge or another vehicle uh, it can sense that, that it's not venting properly so just be aware that, that needs to be kept kept clear so you've got a locker here underneath the bed underneath the uh, french bed at the back uh, at the moment uh, the carpets and the awning winder are just in there uh, the boiler is housed in there and there is a drain for that which is very important uh, to note but I'll come to that as we go uh, to the inside of the vehicle but that's where the boiler is housed so that's basically just storage your battery is um, housed underneath this cover here to get into that you just unscrew these tabs here and that gives you access to the battery and that's your leisure battery uh, moving on around the outside then <clears throat> we've got a, this model has been fitted with a bike rack uh, the way this operates is so that if you've not got a bike, any bikes fitted that's how it would look you just pull this down the bikes obviously sit on these rails here these clasps go over the wheels and they're released by pushing that tab in there you put your these are adjustable so these will move up and down uh, sorry side to side depending on the size of the bike put those over the top of the wheel that keeps the bike in position on its wheels and then these arms here go up like that and then they clasp over the crossbar um, of the bike to keep it uh, in position so it doesn't go uh, like keeps it uh, vertical and then the wheels uh, kept in with these chocks and this model's got a reversing camera in fact it's got two lenses uh, they are housed just there at the top of the back panel uh, just keep them clean uh, if you've just washed it or there's been heavy rain water can build up on the lenses uh, and you'll get a distorted vision as you're looking through it uh, through the monitor on the dashboard sorry it's on the uh, reversing camera on the rear view mirror the monitors mounted on the rear view mirror um, so yeah if there's water on there you will get a distorted uh, vision through the monitor so working around the again the uh, other side of the vehicle this is the toilet cassette um, so this is where all the toilet waste uh, ends up in this in this tank here uh, that's released uh, there's, there's an indication on the toilet itself inside to tell you when that's full it's released by pulling this tab up here and sliding the cassette out you might be able to do that with one hand yep <clears throat> okay so when you've got the toilet cassette out to empty it <clears throat> move that funnel unscrew the cap on the end and then simply turn it upside down uh, so all the, the uh, waste can come out of that funnel as you're doing so press that button in it lets air in as the liquid is coming out uh, I say liquid uh, what you need to do with this is put a chemical into it um, you do that by sliding this cover back here opening up this blade here which gives access through into the tank and then you pour the toilet chemical into this with a little bit of water in the bottom swill it around um, and then it's ready for use again what the chem what the uh, chemical does is it breaks down all the smells gets rid of all the solids uh, and turns it into a liquid so that it can be easily disposed of through the funnel <clears throat> um, also when you, when you've emptied it it's worth just filling it back up with fresh water swilling it around and then emptying it again and then put the chemical into it so you want a, a, a little bit of water in the bottom the required amount of chemical close this back up and then it's ready to insert back into its um, housing on the side of the motor. When you're moving this to the disposal point, which you'll find on sites, it can be disposed of down any toilet, but uh, it's got this handle which extends 
uh, and it's also got wheels on it so you can extend this handle up like a like a suitcase can't do it with one hand but that that extends up here so that you can carry it uh, and then wheel it along to the uh, uh, disposal point so we'll move on around the motorhome or oh, just underneath the uh, toilet disposal point the wastewater is released from here and uh, now there's this uh, for ease of use it's got a, uh, a motor on it that opens and closes the valve that's done near the control panel so we'll come to that when we go inside uh, so what you do with this is you just drive over the grid which is on site it's a bit like a cattle grid drive over that uh, release the valve from inside and that'll get rid of your waste water so anything that goes down the kitchen sink down the shower ends up in that tank there and it's released uh, out of this pipe here. So you'll get used to driving or reversing onto uh, the grid or the disposal point. It's just behind the uh, uh, rear driver's side uh, wheel. So as we move on then, <clears throat> on the side of the vehicle here, we've got two vents. This is the, for the fridge. What it does is it draws cool air in at the bottom, expels the warmer air at the top to uh, cool the fridge. Uh, we'll come on to the controls for the fridge as I go inside in a second uh, to fill up your fresh water so this has got an onboard tank uh, you just simply you're using your habitation key for this so it's lockable you just put your key into there open this up put a hose pipe into here and fill it until you get a, a back pressure of water and it starts spilling out uh, and that's how you fill your fresh water tank and again there's an indication for both waste and fresh uh, on the control panel to tell you what levels those are at to drain the fresh water down it's very similar to the wastewater and the drain is uh, there for that again you can see that it's motorized and the drain uh, is inside next to the control panel which we'll come to as we go through the controls on the inside of the vehicle that is simply just a 12 volt supply should you wish to have a container of water on the floor you could in theory put a submersible pump into there and that's that's your 12 volt feed for it so you could put a submersible pump into a container of water on the floor and it'll pump water into your tank uh, it defeats the object a little bit you might as well just drive over to where the uh, water supply is put the hose pipe in and fill up the tank Next one along is your uh, electric uh, feed, so this is where the mains electric would come into the motorhome. So that will uh, give you the ability to run mains uh, electric appliances inside the motorhome. It'll also charge your leisure battery and if you so wish on this model I think it'll actually charge your engine battery if, so, if you select that on the control panel as well. <clears throat> the way that goes in is... <sighs> It simply just pushes in so that's how it looks with no cable in that's the it's a bit grubby this one but um, that's how the uh, mains cable goes into the motor and you can see how it corresponds to those pins there so that's your main supply into the motor uh, I'll just run through this automatic gearbox Although I think the customer for this one did drive it, but I'll, I'll show you anyway. Um, so, we've got some warnings here because we're plugged in. Uh, you've got neutral in this position here. As you draw it down here and across, that gives you automatic. Or you tap it across, that'll give you manual. And you can see that on the control here so we've got automatic and that's that's how it's uh, nine times out of ten that's how you're going to want it and then for reverse it's that way and then down uh, you must have your foot on the uh, brake pedal in order for this um, system to engage <clears throat> okay so we're in the motor home now um, these are the control panels of the main habitation door here so uh, this is the heating system to switch this on this has got um alder heating um so it, it, it's actually radiators so 
uh, it's got a coolant header tank that runs through a system of radiators so it's a much superior system to a traditional blown air heating system to switch it on it's simply that button there and then if we select the menu button this is your temperature control here so fairly straightforward it's just a touch control panel so touch control panel to select your temperature so room temperature 22 degrees next one down is the heating um, for your hot water so you can select that level what I would do is just leave it on the highest setting and then mix it with cold um, so that you've got a lot of warm water um, so yeah I would just leave it on the, the highest setting for that this selects your fuel um, so this one here is your electric and you've got the ability to change your um, wattage uh, so it'll actually give you three kilowatts this uh, you've got to be careful with that if you want a site that's a low ampage site and uh, then obviously use the one kilowatt if it's a 13 amp site like a UK site then um, you can use your three kilowatt obviously that'll heat up faster and more efficiently um, uh, and then you can select gas now it won't work this because we've no gas connected at the moment. Uh, if you use gas and electric together, obviously it heats up very fast uh, and efficiently. It does take longer to heat up on uh, electric. So if you want a lot of heat quickly and you want to heat up your water quickly for a shower and to wash, then I would use both together. Uh, and then if you're on a site which has got free electric, just switch the gas off. It will come up with an, uh, a warning light to tell you that um, the gas hasn't ignited. Um, if you give it enough time, it'll come up with a warning to say that's that's not ignited because it's trying to it's trying to find gas that isn't there. Um, so fairly straightforward system. You can go into the settings menu and change um, things like you can have it to come on at a certain time and go off at a certain time, etc. But in terms of just basic functionality that's how that's operated to get this screen back up you just press the menu button again these controls here and um, this one is just a light switch uh, switches your lights on and off in the habitation area this is um, where we're discussing how to drain down the water systems and that's how you do that um, so that's don't know whether you could hear that there's the, that was the motors running to close the valves so that's closed that's right that's open that will drain and then if so that, that's in the drain position and that closes them really important that you drain those down in winter and um, if you leave water in these tanks and it freezes it'll expand it'll crack the pipe work you'll have all kinds of uh, damage on the water system so while we're just on that subject i'm going to deviate off from this area here and just show you where the boiler is and uh, there's another drain valve which is really important that has to be drained down when the vehicle's not in use and it's winter and frosty conditions all the water must be drained out of this motor home. So this uh, is the bed area here. <clears throat> this is the boiler. And there's a tap there, but you can see it's a yellow tap. That is now in the drain position. So that's gonna drain all the water out of this boiler here. You've got a container full of water here. So it drains all the water out of these pipes and out of the boiler. That is in the closed position so when it's horizontal it's closed and will retain all the water when it's vertical and it'll go either way like that when it's vertical that is in the drain position when you drain that down it's also very important to open up the taps in here and in the bathroom because what it'll do is it'll let air in as the water's coming out there otherwise you've got this preventing the water from draining out so leave it in the warm position so it's letting air into both the hot and cold side of the system and do exactly the same on the shower and the bathroom taps
Okay, so back to the main control panel here. Um, this basically switches your control panel on and off. You won't get any of the lights or uh, anything operational without that being um, switched on. You've got an external awning light, which is that button there. You've got a dimmer function, so you can dim the lights, and that switches your lights on and off. Uh, so this, that's your habitation lights. If, you, if I switch that off now, they all go out. Some of them are switched individually. Uh, so that button there will actually switch those off individually. Um, and that's the same for a lot of the lighting circuits. The one uh, underneath that is the water pump. Uh, so that must be switched on in order to get water through the uh, water system. When you first put the water into the tank on the outside, you've, you've got to purge the air out of the pipe work. So you've got to switch that on and then open up your tab and wait until you get it'll splutter away so it's pushing the air out of the system uh, again leave it on warm so it's doing both the hot and the cold at the same time and wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of here the reason is that that pump is pumping the water through all that pipe work there filling up the boiler and then eventually it'll come out of your tap uh, so unless you do that you're heating you've got your boiler switched on you're just heating thin air because you need to fill that up uh, by purging all the air out of the out of the system, so that's the water pump. Don't let that run with no water in it. It, it it'll just b burn out. So the pump's running too fast. So you've got to have water in your system for that to uh, to be switched on. This here, <clears throat> so you've got a, a number of different things here. That's telling you that we're running off the ledger battery. You've got your solar panel in operation. We're plugged into mains, and you've got your time. Uh, leisure battery charging uh, so if you scroll through this here it gives you a number of different so you've got system settings heater settings uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that because you can do it through the Aldi system dimmer level you can change what level of lights dim, dimming you want on the lights internal temperature uh, so you can switch, you can stop that, you can limit the number of amps you draw in it just so that you don't blow the fuse on a site. Uh, tank heaters, you can switch those on and off, so if you are in very cold conditions you can switch the heater onto the tank so it won't freeze. You can select your um, engine battery if you want to, let's say you run out of power, um, on your ledger battery and you're in the middle of nowhere and you just want to uh, switch your lights on then you can select your engine battery I wouldn't uh, select the engine battery unless it's an emergency because obviously you flatten that you can't start the engine but one good thing with that is if you do select your engine battery and you're plugged in it will charge the, the engine battery um, so if you uh, worried about your engine battery going flat if it's not in use for any length of time you can come to the vehicle switch that to uh, engine battery and it'll charge your engine battery so that's telling you about your solar panel how uh, efficient that's being vehicle battery good leisure battery charging and that's it we're back through the controls on that so it's uh, fairly uh, straightforward that uh, we've got a carbon monoxide alarm and a fire alarm, uh, sorry, smoke alarm. Your seats swivel round by uh, this little tab here, uh, so you pull that and that'll allow you to swivel the seat round. You will have to go forward and back uh, a little bit because you can see the backrests catching there, so you'll have to uh, get the bar underneath, pull it forward, go round a little bit and then that'll let you go all the way around. Uh, for the bed arrangement here, uh, I think you'd have to actually use the table to make the bed up on this. Uh, so what happens is this section here pulls forward and then you lie these flat. And then I think the table sits into that gap there, but I'll, uh, I'll just make sure on that now. Okay, so what happens with the table is uh, these little clips here sit onto... If you've got it in table mode, then uh, you sit those clips 
onto the top rail those clips there sit onto the top rail when you want to make the bed up uh, you put those clips and clip the table onto the bottom rail and use this shorter leg here so that this table is supported in this zone here so that's what bridges the gap in this section and then this cushion here is drawn up uh, to meet with this and then that's how you create the uh, the double bed here at the front so that's the table in the lower position you can see how the leg sorry about that see how the legs uh, are in there and how the that end is on the lower rail so this leg here you need to bring that down so that it sits in that corner and supports the table and again you're bringing this section over this way to bridge the gap in the middle and then there's some further cushions in the wardrobe that are required to uh, fill fill this gap in here okay so <clears throat> we're in this diner area here the front uh, forward facing diner with the seat belts are this is the charger unit um, so your main, your main supply comes in there on the side of the vehicle and this here um, is uh, the charger which will uh, switch on um, sorry this this is what charges up your, your leisure battery so in here <clears throat> you've got a circuit breaker like a domestic circuit breaker at home to test it you're just pressing this button here and it obviously flips that down um, if you get a fault anywhere, then obviously these will clip down like they would on a, a domestic circuit breaker at home. Uh, you've got various switches on here. If that comes on, you've got reverse polarity. So basically it means that, that you've got live on the negative uh, side. So um, abroad, if you plug in, they're not regulated like we are. So you've got the live on the earth side. So it's, it's reversed. The poles are reversed. It's not a problem unless you've got an appliance that doesn't like reverse polarity, but that, that'll warn you um, that you've got reverse polarity. That's your charger switched on. Uh, you need that switched on to get your heating and hot water operational. And then you've got some 12 volt fuses there. Uh, they'll be explained in the instruction manual to tell you which uh, circuit they correspond to. Uh, and you can switch the whole system on and off there, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, you, well, that's where your water pump's housed if you should ever need to uh, <clears throat> uh, access the water pump. I think that is actually a water filter or it might be a pressure regulator. Um, one of the two. I shall find out if it's important to you, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it is actually a water filter, that one. I'm talking about this here. Okay, so fridge. <clears throat> It's a three-way fridge, it'll run on three power sources, so switch it on. Uh, you've got mains electric, you can select uh, manually if you want mains electric, gas. Uh, obviously you need a gas supply for that to work. Uh, it will start warning you and flashing if because uh, it, it won't ignite at the moment, you can probably hear it. I'm trying to click away and ignite on gas, it won't work because we've, no, uh, we've no gas connected. Uh, so in a second it'll fail. Just let that go to fail and then I can show you how that works. Okay, it doesn't look like it actually warns you when it's failed, but um, it stopped clicking so the, it won't it won't ignite on um, gas because we've no we've no gas supply. The easiest way to get around that is to put it on auto, which I'll come to in a second. But um, if you want to manually select your power source, you can with these buttons here, uh, and then 12 volt. Now that will only run uh, when the um, that will only run when the engine is running so it's sensing that we've not got the engine running it comes off the let me just go back so it comes off the engine alternator uh, so obviously that won't work it's to keep it cool uh, for transit when you're in transit so it's not very efficient on that it just it just keeps it cool as you're traveling best way is to press a auto and it will automatically select the most relevant power source it'll look for mains electric first then it'll try and find gas if it can't find any of them it'll go to uh, 12 volt so you don't need to do anything you don't need to mess about with any of the controls this is your temperature control here um, so if it's a really hot day you want the fridge to work harder 
on a cold day like today you don't want it to work very hard because it'll ice up so leave it on the lower settings uh, if you leave the motor on for any length of time then uh, leave the fridge door ajar because uh, it's a sealed unit and you get stagnant air building up it'll start to smell there's a little catch there which will allow uh, the door to stay open and it won't engage this hook uh, so just very quickly last thing the toilet <clears throat> this system here um, corresponds to the cassette which I showed you outside <clears throat> to use the toilet you lift the lid open up the valve which is that blade there use the toilet and then that's your flush press that button there uh, you've got to have the pump switched on for that uh, it'll swirl around flush the toilet close the valve back up it's important you do that because you don't want the liquid swirling around as you're traveling that little indicator there will come on uh, when the toilet is full so that concludes the demonstrational video for today if you've got any questions i'll be happy to answer those on the day that you collect um, and i look forward to seeing you on the happy day that you collect your lovely new Bessie car motorhome